Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. A very happy Friday to all of you. First up today, we get an interesting article from The Guardian talking about fossil fuel firms among the biggest spenders on Google ads, looking like search results. The results show over one in five ads seen in this study, more than 1,600 in total, were placed by companies with significant interest in fossil fuels. Companies like ExxonMobil, Shell, Aramco, McKinsey, Goldman Sachs were among the top 20 advertisers on these specific search terms. The oil and gas sector has moved away from contesting the science of climate change and now is seeking to influence public discussions about decarbonization in its favor. And Goldman Sachs, which has lent about $19 billion to the fossil fuel industry in 2020, had the third highest number of ads and their ads appeared on almost 6 in 10 searches for renewable energy. In response to these studies, a spokesperson for Google said, we recently launched a new policy that will explicitly prohibit ads promoting climate change denial. This policy applies to all advertisers, including energy companies and financial institutions, and we will block or remove any ads that contain violating content. To be clear, I am not someone who likes to demonize the oil and gas industry because the unfortunate reality is that 99% of us still rely very heavily on what this industry provides for our daily lives. With that said, I of course am very optimistic and eager to move to a renewable energy future, but it's going to take a long time and the oil and gas industry has done a lot for our standards of living so far. The Tesla Greater China YouTube channel uploaded a new video in the Go Giga series specifically talking about Tesla's safety. It's about eight minutes long, so I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but the main takeaways for me were that the Model 3 can actually withstand the weight of two adult African elephants, good dinner party conversation, or six times Times its own weight. Additionally, the seat belts in Teslas are actually adaptive and it senses your body size and can access information based on seat sensors to determine the restraining strength during a crash. And Tesla does use real world data from crashes to make their own specific crash tests. They like to call it data-driven safety. And many of you know, in my opinion, one of the most overlooked aspects of Tesla, specifically in the mainstream, is the safety of its vehicles. And it's such a huge part of Tesla's mission, so I love to see videos like this. From CNEV Post, CATL is already supplying batteries to Tesla in Shanghai, just a few Few blocks down the street. The plant is in the capacity ramp up phase and is already approximately 60% of its design capacity. So this is new supply for Giga Shanghai as of the last few months. The end game capacity for this new CATL plant has not been disclosed. However, CATL is looking to set up an innovation center, an energy and research institute, and of course a high-end manufacturing base. CATL is already China's largest battery maker with 11.45 gigawatt hours of installed capacity as of November and a 55% market share. Tesla released a new blog post with updates about the new Plaid track mode, and there are definitely some new visualizations as well. But what's the point of this track mode, you might ask? Well, it's to achieve the quickest lap time for a production EV at Germany's Nürburgring, and to allow individual adjustability of stability control, handling balance, and regenerative braking to give drivers more authority over vehicle control at the track. Tesla breaks the update down into a few different categories, optimized powertrain cooling, I just want to highlight they drop the temperature of the battery pack and motors to create a significant amount of chilled thermal mass, and they also increase the regen braking power, which has three major benefits, recapturing more energy during deceleration, reduces load on the friction brakes for better thermal management, and gives the driver better modulation and controllability with a single pedal. They also list lateral torque vectoring, adjustable vehicle dynamics, which we mentioned, adaptive suspension damping, and the new performance UI, which you saw the image of above, with a track-focused user interface to provide critical performance data, including a vehicle thermals monitor, lap timer, G-meter, dash cam video capture, and vehicle telemetry. Blog post is linked below if you'd like to read more. Sawyer gave us an update this morning with some changes that will apply to both Fremont and Shanghai built 3 and Y models, and will be phased into new regions. The transition should be complete by quarter two of this year. There is unfortunately, however, some bad news in here, so stick with me. He talks about the AMD processor, the lithium ion low voltage battery, lighter than the outgoing lead acid battery, easier to replace, the heated wiper park, which will help unfreeze the wiper. He adds there's an updated speaker count. There are now 13 speakers down from 14, plus a subwoofer. Tesla has removed the center instrument panel speaker. Tesla says they did this to reduce complexity and redundancy with no appreciable difference in sound quality, and the new speaker setup gives them more flexibility in the future for sound audio improvement, according to Tesla. 
The trailer auxiliary for tow hitch enabled vehicles is now disabled. The new 12 volt lithium ion battery requires a new power conversion adapter to be compatible with 12 volt trailer power. Adapter will be available in mid 2022 and owners can retrofit then. Trailer lights and brakes are not impacted. But the last and worst news, if this turns out to be true and would be contrary to what we heard before, he said Tesla notes they have no plans to offer any of these options above as service retrofits. That includes the AMD processor. So if you want that new AMD Ryzen chip, you might be upgrading to a new Tesla vehicle. Someone put this together and it made me laugh the first time I saw it, so I had to share it with y'all. An excellent point here from Alex on Twitter. So I'm actually in some crypto forums where people actually brought up Tesla the other day and they started talking about how Tesla was overvalued. So naturally I chimed in and tried to add some context to the conversation, basically exactly what Alex was talking about, but their main argument was Tesla only sold X number of vehicles and Toyota GM Ford are selling X number of vehicles. And that's really their only argument and add in the valuation, of course, to say that Tesla is overvalued. And I could talk for the next hour about what people are missing, but this is a pretty good summary of it. People are not looking at growth rates, inventory rates, earnings growth, the innovation, the agile manufacturing system at Tesla, the number of different models sold, margin, profit growth, EBITDA, etc, etc. And go ahead and pause the screen if you'd like to take a look at this chart that was part of Alex's tweet. And here we have the biggest news of the day. It looks like these 15 Tesla semis will be delivered by the end of this month, according to a report. More importantly though, they are supposedly supplied with the 4680 batteries. This is a huge deal. And perhaps even more impressive is going to be the mega charger situation. So Tesla originally talked about a one megawatt charging capacity or a peak rate, which yes, is basically 10 times a hundred kilowatts. So just for some context here, but now it seems that the actual rate is going to be 1.5 megawatts for these new mega chargers, which yes, is six times the peak charging capacity of Tesla's V3 superchargers, which clock in at a top speed of 250 kilowatts. So six times takes us to 1.5 megawatts. Drive Tesla Canada once again has an inside scoop and an image right here. As you can see, the mega charger sitting here with potentially two more in these boxes. I'd really like to see the size of these cables to deliver this type of power, but it looks like we're gonna have to be patient a little longer. From these images, there's also a bank of eight green line high efficiency transformers, mega charger boxes, and control breaker cabinets for the system already installed, and a large mega pack battery storage system is also installed. And Drive Tesla Canada confirmed after receiving these photos, we did confirm with one of our sources, PepsiCo has been told to expect to receive all 15 Tesla semis before the end of January. So this is obviously such a huge monumental moment for many reasons, not the least of which is the 4680s in a vehicle that's going to be delivered to a consumer, even if it is in a you know pre-prototype type of delivery, we're talking 15 semis. And the big part of this is waiting to see how Pepsi will respond. Will they buy more or is it going to be something where they're not satisfied? I can't imagine Tesla would wait and deliver something that isn't going to be up to the expectations of the industry, but as always, we will have to wait and see. So let's hope that Tesla can deliver these 15 and that over the next six months or so of testing, PepsiCo is incredibly satisfied and they come back and maybe order more or at least come out and say how pleased they have been with the vehicles. That right there is really what I will be waiting to see. Just as a refresher and for your conversations, here's some data on the Tesla semis. Go zero to 60 with an 80,000 pound load in 20 seconds, 300 or 500 500 miles of range, four independent motors on rear axles, less than two kilowatt hours per mile in terms of energy consumption. They list estimated fuel savings, but that's gonna vary widely. The expected base price for the 300 mile range is 150K, expected base price for 500 mile range is 180,000, and the base reservation is 20,000. Sadly, we don't have any details in terms of which range variant PepsiCo is ordering but I'll keep my eyes open. Moving on, on Twitter, Kyle Connor and Dr. C and Proctor shared some videos of the Tesla boring tunnel and people using it at the CES event. So I'm gonna play these videos for you, but I just wanted to share where they're coming from.
and just something to throw out there. This video was shared in the comments. I would pretty much disregard the comment, but looking at the video, traffic in boring tunnels. I could definitely see some people being a little claustrophobic in a situation like this. What do you guys think? We get an update to the Model X. So looking at purchase price, estimated delivery is October of 2022 for the Plaid variant with the upgraded wheels, bumping down to the 20 inch wheels, delivery stays the same. But the change here is right now, you can only choose the six seat layout version. The five and seven seat configurations are no longer an option. And that six seat configuration was around $6,000 more expensive, which means the cheapest Model X Plaid is now $126,490. So my guess here is that at some point in the future, the five and seven seat variants will come back Tesla could just be streamlining its production to the six seat variant for the foreseeable future as it ramps up the Model X Plaid line. But don't hold me to those five and seven seaters coming back because that's just my gut feel. Gary Black did a live stream on his future fun channel this afternoon, part of why the video was slightly delayed today, but the full video will be linked below and I just wanted to share some highlights. Gary said the December non-farm payrolls came in well below expectations, part of why the markets are down overall today. He also mentioned that the 10 year treasury yield in the last month has gone from 1.3 to 1.8, which definitely hurts long duration assets. Think growth and tech companies and yes, Tesla. And if inflation were to get out of control, these rates could go much higher too in the three to 4% range. And in case you're not familiar, short-term rates do feed into long-term rates. And yes, this impacts growth in tech stocks because this changes valuations and has plenty of business implications like higher cost to borrow, lower consumer spending, et cetera. And lastly, the street expectation for Tesla's earnings per share is at $2.18 but half of the analysts have not updated their numbers since the delivery beat, and Gary is currently sitting at $2.55 per share. The whisper number for earnings per share is actually at $2.40, so that is the number we should be hoping Tesla beats when they announce their financials later this month. That's gonna do it for today though. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and safe weekend, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.